So this is the MP kit for uh, the rear disc brake uh, setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the parts uh, that are inside of uh, this box. All right, guys, we're just going to be going over uh, the MP kit that I got for the rear disc brakes uh, conversion kit for my 68 Baja. Um, anyways, this MP kit comes with everything you need to install it. Uh, it comes with, um, of course, the, the disc brakes. It comes with the calipers. It comes with the uh, caliper mounts. Uh, this, this mounts to the axle. This part holds the caliper on. It comes with all your seals, your uh, brakes, uh, pads. These are off of a uh, Carmen Ghia. So if you ever need to replace them, it's the same uh, brake pads that they use on Carmen Ghias. Uh, it comes with, um, you know, it's street legal, you're going to want to make sure you have the e-brake um, set up. If it's not, you don't, if it's just for uh, sand use, you don't need to worry about this. Uh, but it comes with two cables, one for each brake for the uh, the e-brake. Um, it also comes with this uh, stock uh, rubber hose, uh, basically to replace the hose that goes to your... Um, drum brakes. Um, I went ahead and upgraded to uh, the stainless steel uh, hose. Um, so anyways, um, it comes with the calipers. Now on these calipers, they are labeled uh, left and right. So you want to make sure you put those on the correct side of the vehicle. I believe uh, the right means uh, passenger side and the left means uh, driver's side. Um, without actually uh, starting to do the install. Um, that's what I believe it is, but you'll have to take a look at the directions on that. Um, so, anyways, it's everything you need. Now, when you're doing this kit, uh, I recommend getting some DOT3 uh, brake fluid. It doesn't have to be this brand, but at least DOT3, okay? Um, also, upgrading your uh, master cylinder um, to uh, be set up for uh, front and rear because then you can do uh, front and rear biased uh, check valves um, but since I'm going to be actually doing disc brakes in the front this should be just fine for my setup so um, that's the whole kit guys now they don't come red I, I have painted these red uh, just because I wanted some color on them. So anyways, you need to get rid of that. You're going to need to get rid, uh, get this nut off. Uh, that nut is actually a 36 millimeter um, socket. Uh, I made this tool here um, to go ahead and uh, hit that nut off because it's actually torqued on pretty well. So if you can have a breaker bar, that's great. If not, you can get something like this and then just you know give it a good slam and it should break it loose. Now, I um, believe uh, the passenger side is um, uh, right-hand thread and the, the driver's side is left-hand thread, similar to what the front ones are. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, unit pulled off. Alright, so, um, I did find out that both sides are right-hand threads. Um, so. Once you have the nut off, these pretty much just slide right off, um, just like you saw there. Then you'll be able to get to all the pads and everything on the inside. Okay, so you're gonna have to remove your e-brake uh, connection and then uh, just start unbolting uh, the brake pads and then you can get to those two units and remove it off and then you can put your new uh, disc brake on. All right, so in order to get this off, you're gonna have to pull down on it, okay? And then you're gonna push it forward. It's a little difficult to do one-handed. You're gonna basically get enough slack to where you can get this little knob off of this piece. Once that's loose, then there's a uh, C-clamp back here that you're just gonna push off the back side, I believe it is, and then it'll just basically slide out the back of this whole unit. At that point, then you can just remove these four bolts. Which... 
Okay, to get this uh, e-brake off, uh, there's actually a bolt on the back side here. It's a uh, 13 millimeter. It's right here. Okay. A little hard to see it's rusted out, but that's a 13 millimeter. You're gonna pull that off, and then that whole cable will just slide right out. So once you have uh, the brake pads played off and, and the actual drum off, um, you're basically gonna be seeing your bearing in here. And uh, behind that, there's oil. That oil is actually in your transmission. So it's actually gonna be draining um, basically all the oil out of your transmission. So when you get done with this job, you're going to want to uh, make sure you uh, replace the fluid in your transmission. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and let it drain. And then uh, once it's fully drained, I'll go ahead and continue removing the rest of the, the parts out of here and replace it with the new uh, disc brake. All right, guys, so I got one side on. Uh, I got the nut on and the uh, cotter pin. And the bracket is uh, facing towards the back of the vehicle. Um, so one thing I want to let you guys know here, uh, this is the MP kit uh, disc brake conversion with uh, e-brake. Now, this rotor um, they make to fit uh, or excuse me, this kit they make to fit IRS and swing axle. As you can see, I have a uh, swing axle underneath there. Um, the only difference in the, the, t the kit is uh, the rotor itself. Or excuse me, the, the well yeah, the rotor itself. But um, I actually had to have a machinist uh, cut roughly about I know this looks smaller than uh, three quarters, but uh, roughly about three quarters. That's only because of the cut they had to do. Uh, off of the neck here, uh, the reason for that is it was sticking too far out where you couldn't get the nut even on um, the axle itself. So um, we had to cut three quarters of an inch off of that neck right there. Um, I'm not sure if I ordered the wrong kit or uh, or what happened I, I don't really know um, I ordered off of Amazon uh, they didn't ask you know whether it was IRS or swing axle the description said it would fit both uh, but obviously it would with some modifications now usually they send this uh, rotor with uh, or excuse me disc uh, with um, uh, the correct cut here and then they add a spacer in so you can just put a spacer there if you have the IRS so anyways one thing to uh, look out for when you are doing yours um, easy fix um, hopefully you get the correct kit that does not have a longer neck um, so anyways let's get over to the second side and uh, I'll walk you through what we need to do over there Okay, so as you can see, um, I have it completely stripped down to the, the axle. Um, now, you're going to want to pull this off. It, uh, the kit comes with a new uh, metal um, washer in there, a new rubber washer that goes between that, that uh, washer and then this spacer here. Save this spacer, so you're just going to want to get a screwdriver and pop it loose. Once you pop it loose, it'll slide off. Then you're going to replace the washer and that, uh, um, the O-ring, excuse me, and that washer. Okay, so now that you've gotten that uh, spacer off, this guy, you're going to replace the metal washer that's behind it. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to replace the rubber O-ring. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and put this ring back on. Now you see that there's a, 
a lip on one side and on the other side it's straight cut. That lip's going to go towards your transmission, okay? So now that you have all that laid out, we're going to go ahead and take this piece and we're going to get that rubber grommet out, out of there and then also clean off the old gasket that was on here. Get this thing nice and clean and then we'll press uh, a new uh, gasket back in here and make sure you save this uh, washer down at the bottom, the one that's moving down there. Uh, you're going to need to put that back in as well. And then before you put it all back together, and I'll show you, um, there's no ring that goes in here as well. Alright guys, so I got that uh, the old washer out. A um, couple things. Um, make sure you put this guy back in the bottom, okay? The other thing is, go ahead and get some of the... Uh, oil that came out of the transmission before and lube up this one so it slides in easy doesn't need much you just need enough to put on your your fingertips and get that thing wet okay don't worry about that you'll clean that off later all the oil off your disc later okay so we're just going to get enough oil on there that it'll help slide it in okay Get that thing nice and coated. So now, um, you're gonna use a uh, bearing uh, race. Basically, uh, looks like this. It helps you uh, press in a bearing race. Just gonna put this on top. Okay. Getting it lined up, and then you'll just tap it in with a hammer. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish that up, and then I'll show you the rest. Okay, so now you have that uh, rubber uh, O-ring in. It's going to be flush with the top of this lip. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and grab your second O-ring and just slide it in that hole. Okay. Now this is where this bracket comes into play. Okay. Now you want to make sure... That it's facing in towards the engine like this and back towards the rear of the car okay so you're gonna go ahead and put it on like that okay now it's gonna be a pain because uh, the angle it's gonna want to keep falling off so once you have that there now you're gonna put your gasket and then you're gonna put let's see just set that there so you're gonna put your gasket on and then this piece on okay so I'll go ahead and get that set in place all right so now that you have all this tightened up that's facing the rear of the vehicle and towards the engine okay you're gonna want to get some NICs and put it on these uh, um, grooves here um, what that's gonna do is allow your disc uh, part of the brakes to not seize on your axle um, So you're gonna put the anti-seize on these uh, splines and then once you line these splines up to those You're gonna uh, it just basically it'll create a, a Water barrier to where uh, it won't rust in there and it won't uh, seize the two metals together so once you do that, you can slide the disc on and then put the nut on. Now that nut is going to be tightened down to 250 foot-pounds torque. Um, right now I'm just going to use this guy and I'll show you in a little bit just to tighten it back up as much as I can. Alright guys, so I'm going to be installing these uh, one inch wheel spacers. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing this is to go from uh, the four lug to a Chevy five lug. Okay, now when you're installing these, they're gonna have another pin like this that screws into one only, and it's it's an offset uh, pin. Not sure exactly what the name of it is, but you can tell by there, and that allows it to line up to that hole. Uh, so to properly install this, you're gonna want to of course put thread locker on here 
Um, but you're also going to want this thing all the way tight. Uh, so what I suggest doing is going around in each one, tighten it down, and then put this on. See if the other three holes line up. Um, if these other three holes don't line up, go to the next one. So I actually went through all three of these. I found that this one is the correct one to have it fully tight, um, seated against the disc. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, red uh, 262 uh, Loctite, it's high strength, on uh, the backing threads here, or the, the bottom threads. And then we'll just screw it into there as tight as I can get it with uh, by hand. And then I'll just uh, snug it down. Double check before everything gets uh, seated that the other three holes will line up properly. And then uh, go ahead and put your uh, original bolts back in. Okay, so after you get this one uh, uh, weird shaped uh, bolt in, you're going to go ahead and line up the other three with these bolts that are provided. Okay, so that's a 14 millimeter uh, socket that you'll need. You're going to put thread locker on these and screw them on in. Okay. I'm not sure what the torque is on these guys, but I went ahead and just cut, just put the socket on, and then you just get a mallet and hit this a few times. Like puts a, you know, tightens and tightens it down enough where you know I think it's gonna hold just fine. All right, guys. So now we're gonna be working on the rear uh, brake assembly. Um, in order to install this, um, you can go ahead and. Uh, Use the hardware that's provided, okay, and you use two for each side. Okay, and you're gonna, uh, they're gonna thread into here. Now, um, the other half of it is gonna be mounted on this, okay, and then thread into this guy. So, uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and mount this, and then we'll open it up by opening or taking this bolt completely out. And allowing this to swing open and I'll show you uh, once I get it installed okay so once you have it in here you're gonna tighten this up with a 17 millimeter uh, wrench you're gonna want to tighten it up to where this is centered in that gap right there okay right now it doesn't look centered but once you get everything tight it should center right up if it does not they provide shims to install in here which allows you to move it in or out uh, depending on what you need to do on it. Um, doesn't look like they give much movement for um, inwards, but they do allow it to go out um, more. So let's go and get this thing tightened up and see what it does. Okay, so that looks pretty good in there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove that bolt. I'm going to put some thread locker in there. And then I'm going to torque it down to 25 foot-pounds. Now that I have the thread locker in there, what we need to do is remove this bolt. And that's a 19, excuse me, a 9 16 okay? Just going to remove that completely. Let the whole unit swing down, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put the pads in here and slide it back over the the rotor all right so there it is now all that's left is to uh put the um uh, line on and then the e-brake um uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and bolt those things on now all right guys so i'm going to be removing the old e-brake line and installing the new e-brake line uh the reason for that is this has the old drum brake uh loop on it and uh and then doesn't have the correct uh, connections to lock onto this uh, hole here. So the new style comes with this uh, ball on the end, and then it comes with a uh, groove here. And when you slide it into there, you're gonna put a C uh, clamp on the other side, and it'll actually lock it in place. And then this ball will hook into this lever on the side. Now I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna run it, uh, whether it be around this uh, bump stop and in 
or turn it sharp and go that direction. Uh, you want to try to keep it away from anything that's going to be rubbing it like this shock that's going up and down or this uh, spring plate. Um, so I don't know, we'll, we'll figure out where I'm going to run it um, after I get the get them installed. Uh, so to install them, what you're going to need to do is, uh, let me get a light on the inside here. You're going to need to remove this. Uh, lighting's pretty bad, sorry guys. There you go. So you're going to need to remove this uh, clamp here. And that, I've already taken one side off. That just goes on top of this e-brake uh, uh, dimple here, I guess. Um, there's two sides, one e-brake for the driver's side and then one e-brake line for the passenger's side. All right, guys, so the easiest way to get this uh, new one in is literally pull the old one out. Okay, and once you get, get it all the way out, you're going to feed the threaded end of your new one back into that hole. I can show you. Back into this hole here. Okay, just go ahead and start pushing it in. It will actually find its way into the vehicle just fine. Okay. Push all the way into the hole there. Okay, come back to here and pull back roughly about six inches. Okay, and then you're going to come inside the cab. And you'll see it in here. That's why I said six inches so you can get to these threads here. And that's it. All right, so go ahead and just pull both sides up. And then get your uh, e-brake handle installed and all that back in, and you're done on this end.